Hey, I'm going to look at this. Uh, this is a very interesting X-ray transformer from quite a large unit. It's thanks to Stephen Tested to Destruction for letting me get hold of this. Um, but it's really quite interesting to how we look at it and how it's constructed. Um, currently got it set up, um, driving it from two large IGBT modules here. So it's a, an H bridge. This is just for an experiment, though. Normally this is run under oil so again can't run it up to full power by any means not going to do that anyway uh, I've got 30 volts DC on this this is the bus for this uh, H bridge and I'm just running it from an oscillator actually and uh, but we're going to uh, see what sort of outputs we get for what sort of voltages in and then we'll have a little look at the, the actual transformer construction uh, yeah so I've got about 8 kilohertz going into the trans pulse transformer here and I'm just going to put the DC supply on and uh, I've got uh, the high voltage probes so uh, the voltage here is in kilovolts and if I take the voltage input up to 10 volts so I've got DC input of 10 volts and I'm getting roughly 10 kV at the output as you can hear there's quite a whine off this this is running at to say 8 kilohertz so it's in the audible range if it was under oil it's probably a little quieter uh, but you can can hear it you can see by the the thickness of the cables here it's designed to take quite a lot of power uh, so I'll take the DC voltage up a bit more just to see how linear it is so if I take it to 15 kV yeah so again still 15 kV out so 15 volts in, so we're following factor of a thousand to get up to 20. So 20 volts in, 20 kV on the output. Okay. Okay, I shall let this discharge itself. Okay, I'm going to just got a spark gap here now, and we're going to apply a voltage and see if we can get it to jump that gap. I'll take it about 10 kV. That's uh, 30 amps at 30 volts to do that nearly. But it certainly takes a lot of current. Okay, as I say, there's a few um, very interesting design features to this transformer that make it quite nice. Uh, I was actually looking for one that was, was a higher frequency, being that 8 kilohertz is very audible um, and could be annoying if you're using it, but uh, but the, the, the actual advantages are, are outweighing that. Uh, the construction is very interesting. One of the problems you always get with um, x-ray transformers generally is that they are a center ground so this point here is actually the the ground uh, part and you have a, a, a negative and a positive high voltage uh, giving you a full voltage which would normally be across the x-ray tube or in this case about 150 kV but uh, obviously half that to with reference to the ground or the chassis point but because this uh, the construction is quite interesting. It may be possible to to not connect these to ground and leave them floating. They're sufficiently far away from other items that a uh, breakdown shouldn't really be such a shouldn't pose such a big problem. So that's what I'm kind of looking at just now. The construction is very interesting. You've got the transformer bobbins and the capacitors and the multipliers are all in this uh, plastic case, uh, and the iron core is on the outside and in, in here through the center of it and there's no physical contact the primary windings through, through this large copper tape here are completely separate from the and, the and the windings for that are separate from the actual high voltage system in here or the bobbin in here so we'll have a little dismantle and have a little look closer at it if I take this off it's just the mounting brackets which are plastic or nylon and if you look at this this is the iron core it is iron uh, rather than ferrite at this frequency it's probably about the higher frequency you can run with uh, soft iron cores uh, and it's all bolted on clamps here okay I'm just carefully removing these clamps that hold the iron core together 
And there's three of these buns. This is the last one. Spacers. The surface of these are so well polished they, they stick uh, just with the remnants of the oil there. So it's the two two C-shaped cores there. And then that lets us uh, see into the primary windings are. So the priming, primary winding is also screened with uh, an earth. So, a, so this can then be removed. Uh, once the covers come off. So the covers are clamped with nylon screwed rod. And covers to come off, and the primary coil then can be extracted. The primary coil here, uh, see the manufacturing dates 93, and you can just see the, that's the screening on both inner and outer side of the primary. Now with this cover off you can see the one side of the windings from the transformers coming out to this is the ends of the capacitor banks in here. And if I turn it over and look at this side. This side has your diode multiplier arrangement here and the other side of the transformer connections here and the capacitors this side. So that's giving you the positive arm from here and a, a negative arm from here with respect to this point. Now these are isolated as two separate wires but these two wires are, are generally are common to chassis. But the nice arrangement here is that um, it's so distant without even oil in it it's quite it's quite reasonable to apply quite a high voltage to it you've got this amount of isolation and then the circle means that even if we common these points there's no stress to ground from here which is quite nice um, rather than putting it into oil um, it's awfully messy I was thinking of actually putting wax in it again I did discover with Normal candle wax, the shrinkage is very large and that can cause delamination on things which allow tracking. Um, the gel wax is probably a lot better, so we'll try, I'm going to try gel wax with this, um, but I wouldn't be able to vacuum it down, but the intention is not to take it to its full voltage anyway. So your actual secondary windings are all here. And what is also very interesting of the windings is there's no common, it's separate 10 kV bobbins uh, uh, between from one side to the other. Uh, and then it's all multiplied up by additions of the capacitance in series. So that's a really nice, nice way of doing it uh, from the point of view of limiting stresses within the windings for breakdown. The nice thing of being able to completely isolate this from ground means that if you need a high voltage supply you can effectively ground whichever terminal you want um, to be common uh, and generally because x-ray transformers have this center point that makes it quite difficult to do that in many cases but this one might be able to be more flexible we can't really strip this any further down to to show the actual windings because it would now need the desoldering of the circuit board and all the capacitors to be able to do that. Um, so that would that would possibly damage it. So this is as far down as it can go uh, from that point of view but we can seal it up and fill it with the, the gel wax quite easily. It's possible here to see the the diameter of the the actual high voltage bobbin in, inside this unit. This is obviously the first point closest to the, the core 
uh, and the second side of that winding's on the other side. Uh, so, but that forms one one uh, coil to into the the diodes the other side. Then the next one, there is no coupling between these. If I take a meter, you will find that there's, these are not connected. So I don't even see that's the um, gel wax being added. So it's not perfect, but. It's fairly uniform. It's certainly covering our high voltage uh, diode arrangement here, which is good. Um, I've also taken out our cent the centre tap here and bridged that, so we now have our plus minus. At the output, so we'll reassemble it and see what it can do. Certainly not the uh, shrinkage that you get with um, ordinary wax. Just taking the other side off and the uh, wax has completely covered that area so that's really nice. I expected to find some bubbles or something because it means the wax has permeated right through which is rather good. So that's all looking quite nice. So just uh, slotting in back in the uh, primary. I can put this on again. So with that closed back up again, I'm ready to put the iron core back in again uh, and complete the assembly. Okay, this is the uh, diagram of the circuit for that uh, X-ray transformer. The, uh, I've given the diagram exactly as it's laid out on the printed circuit board in this circle shape. Um, for simplification, you can see on the outside are all the capacitors. And uh, I've illustrated these are the windings of each part of the transformer. So we have, uh, I think it's 12. Uh, separate windings in total of the second or 12 secondaries on that transformer. Each one is connected to diodes and capacitors for the charge circuit and the circuit the capacitors are all in series uh, right round well they are when this link is in this is now the link which was the grounding point which I've now put in place uh, and that gives us a, a plus high voltage and a minus high voltage out of the transformer.